let's try and pre-film over a month's worth of videos in two weeks. Can I do it? Probably not. But let's give it a go. Hi guys, welcome back to Bookish Weekend. My name is Brooke and today we are doing the first video in my Fantasy for Newbies series. I don't know what I'm going to call this yet. Um, but basically I thought I would do a series of videos. Um, at the moment I have six planned. I might have a few more. Um, if I get more ideas or if I have requests. Um, but I thought I would do a series of videos about the fantasy genre and the subgenres and where to start and what books to read and what I recommend and where to go from there and everything really because I am a big reader of fantasy and it's my favourite genre now but I used to only be able to read urban fantasy because high fantasy and portal fantasy and historical fantasy and all these different genres are just really intimidating uh, there's so many different subgenres, and then each book has its own different magical world and magic system and words and languages for you to get used to and it can be really intimidating. So I thought I would just help you guys out because I knew I needed help when I was just getting into um, fantasy. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this. Um, if you do have any certain topics you want me to talk about in fantasy or any questions about it, just leave them down below and I might film a video on it. Or if it's just a simple question, I'll answer it for you. Uh, so yeah. So today we're going to be talking about the different different subgenres, the most common ones that I've seen at least. Uh, I've got six. I'd say the first. And so the first three are the most common that you will see, and then I have the other three, which are just of the little ones I have seen uh, occasionally, but they're not the most popular, and they can sort of be slotted into other genres. But I have one here which I would have called urban fantasy, but now I'm starting to think it's portal fantasy. Yeah, it's definitely portal fantasy. Um. Anywho, so let's just get into the different types of fantasy. The first, so the first type of fantasy I am talking about is high fantasy or epic fantasy. Um, I don't think there's a difference between high fantasy or epic fantasy. It basically is the most traditional fantasy, I would say. It is where the book or the story takes place in an entirely different fantasy world. We don't have any crossover to the real world. The stories do tend to be a lot thicker than normal fantasy books just because you've got to have a lot of world building and a complete new introduction of uh, lifestyle and places and language and all of that sort of things. High fantasy basically is just new, completely new world and these tend to be the most intimidating because you don't have the comfort of reading about a world you already know. I definitely found them intimidating because there's just so much to learn as well as trying to like get wrapped up in the story and the political systems and the magic systems and it can seem like a lot. What I do say is if you have been reading fantasy and you just haven't touched high fantasy yet, go for it. Give it a go. You don't know you're not going to like it and that you're not going to get into it unless you try it. Because um, I definitely didn't try it due to fear and then I picked up a high fantasy book because I wanted to read it. And I loved it. So yeah, however, if you are starting fantasy, I wouldn't start in a high fantasy book because they are long and lengthy and intimidating. However, there are some high fantasy books that uses tree, which I'll be talking about later in this uh, video. And I'll also be talking about them later in this series. So definitely uh, keep an eye out on those videos as well. But an example of high fantasy books would be Lord of the Rings, Sodi Mass's books, so The Quantum Thorns and Roses. We have the Grisha series by Lee Bardugo, you know, Rebel of the Sands by Elwyn Hamilton. All of those sort of books are high fantasy. Some of them are really easy to read and get into. Rebel of the Sands isn't that long, and that's a high fantasy book. Um, but the first book in the Akatar series isn't that long. So, you know, they aren't all long, but some of them are. Traditionally, they are, you know, like Brandon Sanderson, J.R.R. Tolkien. All of those sort of fantasy books are long, but not all high fantasy are, so. Definitely just looking around what high fantasy book interests you and what you feel most comfortable starting to read. So next we're going to be talking about low fantasy. Low fantasy I'd say can be used interchangeably with urban fantasy and a lot of people do so. And it can be very hard to distinguish what is low fantasy or what is urban fantasy. Um, I'm going to talk about urban fantasy in a little bit because it is kind of two sub genres but at the same time have a lot of crossover so low fantasy is just where it is set partly in the real world or a world like our world with supernatural or magical elements to it 
So it has that little bit of similarity to our world, but also being magical at the same time. An example of this would be Harry Potter. Again, I could say Harry Potter is urban fantasy, but I think it fits the low fantasy genre a little better. Um, because in Harry Potter, obviously, uh, you have the Muggles and you have London and England and our world. It just has magic in it. It has Hogwarts and it has this wizarding world as well, like living simultaneously with uh, our world. So that's what low fantasy is. Isn't much to say on that. These books tend to be a lot easier to read and get into. I definitely recommend this genre if you're getting into fantasy or if you're a newbie, because um, it's just really comforting and there's not too much to get your head around all at once. So yeah, some of the other examples are like Twilight maybe or uh, the Shiver series. Again, I would say these are also urban fantasy and I've actually got Shiver on an urban fantasy video later. So as you can see, these are interchangeably used. So the third genre we have is urban fantasy. Urban fantasy, again, can be used interchangeably with low fantasy. It generally describes a fantasy world that lives in an urban or city-like area in our world. So it lives simultaneously with in a big city or a town, however, it also can be used in terms of contemporary fantasy. So that is with um, fantasy set in our present day, present world. Uh, maybe not in a city. Maybe not in a city. It would make a lot more sense if it wasn't city because of the term urban fantasy. But again, it's very hard to describe urban fantasy. I say it's one of the easiest uh, fantasies or subgenres to get into because. You tend to have where a character doesn't know they have this gift or they're part of this race or maybe like magical elves or something, I don't know. And then they find out that they are and then they get introduced to this world um, slowly. So like Harry Potter again, he gets introduced into the wizarding world. The Mortal Instruments, Clary doesn't realise she doesn't know she's a shadow hunter and then she gets introduced to the shadow hunter world and the down world. Uh, that sort of thing. Because the characters tend to get introduced to the world, it's a lot easier for you to get into the book and understand the world because as the character gets introduced to the world, you're getting introduced to the world instead of just being in a world where everyone knows what's going on. I'd say urban fantasy is one of my favourite subgenres. I do love like the Shadowhunter series, so it's definitely one of my favourites. Uh, yeah, definitely somewhere to start if you are looking to get into fantasy. The next three genres are popular, uh, you will see them throughout especially the YA world, I'm not sure about the other bookish worlds but um, you will see them throughout the YA world but I will also say they're not as big, as obvious as other subgenres as being a subgenre of fantasy. So the next genre I'm going to talk about is fairy tale retellings and obviously not all fairy tale retellings have to be fantasy, we have things like Geekerella which is a contemporary uh, fairy tale retelling but at the same time we do have a lot of fantasy fairy tale retellings. Uh, this is basically where you have a fairy tale, or even sometimes it's just like moments of history, and they are told and turned um, to the author's you know delight and into a different story. So it might be like Lost Boy, where it is the prequel of how Captain Hook became Captain Hook in Peter Pan. You might have a uh, What's the rest of my own called? You might have Heartless, and that's the story of how the Queen of Hearts became the Queen of Hearts. So you can see they've sort of got the original story and they've turned it on its head and made it so it's a prequel to see how the villain becomes the villain. What other fantasy retellings are there? The Court of Thorns and Roses is technically a fairy tale retelling. It is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. Um, I think people like ignore that a lot at the moment, have ignored that recently, and I definitely understand why because it's not the most obvious. In your face fairy tale retelling but it's still a fairy tale retelling nonetheless so that's just that's the story of Beauty and the Beast uh, in a different world with different characters and slightly different plot line it has some of the core themes to Beauty and the Beast in it um, but the author has used it to her advantage to try and make her own story again we have Hunted I haven't read Hunted but I heard it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling so they've sort of done the same thing there as well the next subgenre I'm going to talk about is portal fantasy and this is the one we don't actually see that often in the YA world um, at all really. So portal fantasy, so this tends to be where the character enters a fantasy world through a portal or a gateway from the modern real world and they usually get to, like caught up in the drama that's happening in the fantasy world and then at the end of the story they tend to come back to the real world, you know, changed and with, you know, different and affected by their experiences in this uh, fantasy portal world. 
Uh, definitely um, the one everyone knows, of course, is The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. Uh, if you don't know The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, what have you been doing? Um, basically a group of kids discover Narnia through a doorway in, in their wardrobe, basically, at the back of their wardrobe, and they get, and they find, them, they find themselves in Narnia and the war and the drama that's happening there, and they become, you know, important in that storyline. And that is like the classic portal fantasy. I feel like if you know Narnia, you can understand what portal fantasy is. But some other portal fantasies are... The Land of Stories by Chris Colfer. I love that series so much. It is a middle grade series. Alex and Connor, these two twins, get sucked through a portal in their grandmother's fairy tale storybook into this world of fairy tales, basically. And at the end, they come back to the real world, affected by their experience in the fantasy fairy tale world. Another example of this is Every Heart a Doorway. I haven't read this book, but I'm pretty sure it's not like the traditional fantasy. It's about how like the children who have gone through these places are affected and it's about the aftermath of this, so I wouldn't say it's the traditional portal fantasy, it sort of turned it on its head and um, looked at the aftermath of what these children have gone through. Haven't read it yet, it is on my TBR, so I'm very excited to pick it up, but I just definitely wanted to mention it because it's, it sounds very interesting and it definitely fits somewhere in the portal fantasy subgenre. Other examples um, I haven't read is A Dark Shade of Magic, but... Um, different London. So yeah, our other famous portal fantasies include Peter Pan and Alice Wonderland, two great children's classics. So the next subgenre of fantasy that we're going to be talking about is historical fantasy. Historical fantasy is one I don't actually see it often, but I thought I'd include it anyway. I feel like it's something that there should be more of, because I feel like it would be really popular. Um, so this tends to be fantasy set in a historical part of the real world. So like, something magical in something magical in Victorian London you know like something supernatural happening amongst the time of the Tudors stuff like that uh, you could say the Infernal Devices is an urban fantasy and a historical fantasy because it is set in the Victorian times um, I'm going to go with The Shadow of Rotting Burning being a historical fantasy because it's set during I'd say about the turn of the century during the Industrial Revolution sort of era and it's also fantasy and it's also it's just fantasy set in the past of the real world really quite easy to explain quite easy to understand i think um outlander is a historical fantasy i haven't read outlander or shadow bright and burning um but yeah they're popular books and they're definitely historical fantasy so there we go and the last social of fantasy that we're going to be talking about today is magical realism now magical realism isn't really one that i like or have much experience in because just sort of this isn't what magical realism is but for me magical realism reminds me of miracles and like Christian fantasy and I know that sounds really odd and there's nothing wrong with that if you like those books great for you and if you're like into Christian fiction or whatever great for you but this is what it reminds me of and like these really cheesy films that my mum would watch on True Life TV, TV or wherever it was like and I just can't deal with that however I would like to get into more magical realism and one of my favourite books could technically be included in magical realism subgenre so yeah, it's also one that we don't see too often. So magical realism tends to be where the majority of the world and story is the same um, as our real world. But then there are little bits and snippets that are magical realism. Um, Ava Lavender is magical realism because she's born with um, wings, I believe. But everything else about the world is completely normal. Again, I'm going to say The Hazelwood is magical realism. I loved that book. I'd say it's either urban fantasy or magical realism, but it can be included as magical realism, which surprised me when I found out. It can be included as magical realism because it is primarily set in the real world, but then we have the like the fairy tales and the Hazelwood aspect of it, which is fantasy. There were the subgenres of fantasy that we're going to be talking about today. I hope this helped you. Um, again, subscribe if you want to see the rest of these fantasy guide videos if you want to see more of these fantasy guide videos uh, give it a big thumbs up and if you have any requests for this video this type of fantasy guide videos let me know down below and i'll try and film it for you what's your type of favorite type of fantasy uh what genre do you think you're gonna start with have you heard about any books that you might want to pick up let me know down below and i'll see you guys next time bye